Manchester United have had their bid for Lenny Euro accepted. Plus, reportedly now lead the race with people close to him, including his mother, pushing and happy for the move to Manchester United. We're going to be taking a look at Arsenal and their pursuit of Victor Jukeles. That reportedly has taken a massive boost in recent hours. Plus, Chelsea are set for brand new, fresh talks with Victor Osimum about and looking at bringing the brilliant, in my opinion, brilliant centre forward to Chelsea this summer. Make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you are subscribing as well. And of course, scan the QR code now and check out our title sponsors, Stocks FC. It is the football tr stock trading site where you trade football players that pay you dividends. You can get signed up now and entered into a free draw to win a sign ball from Trent Alexander-Arnold. More to come on them a little bit later, but I wanted to start off with Arsenal this evening. And two areas I think are really significant. First story says that Arsenal are braced for fresh Emil Smith-Rowe bids as Crystal Palace plot a move. Arsenal, of course, have seen bids rejected uh, from Crystal Palace and from Fulham. And it is now stated that Crystal Palace are going to be looking to increase the offers on offers that have already been made in a pursuit to bring Smith Rowe to the South London club. The West London outfit Fulham are also set to be looking to bid again for the young attacking midfield player who has found it very difficult to get game time at Arsenal, um, in especially in the sort of second half of this campaign. So it's gonna, it's a really intriguing one to see how this one plays out. I felt for a while that Arsenal were looking to sell a number of players before they commit to a number of incoming. And we know they're linked to the the Nico Williamses, the Morenos, Victor Jukares that we'll come on to. But selling players is key. Of course, there are links with Marseille, with Eddie Nketiah, the club holding out for over £30 million for him and looking for those increased bids on Smith Rowe. And this all comes at the same time as the story states that the sporting star Victor Jukares is perhaps the standout name linked with their move to Arsenal this summer as they bid to bolster their attacking options. Thus far, the Gunners have yet to formalise their apparent interest, but could have been handed a boost. According to a number of outlets, Napoli have ruled themselves out of the running, perhaps offering Arsenal an easier route to sign the Sweden international. And this is on the back of a day where Arsenal kind of briefed the media and stated, well, if we can't get our key targets for sensible prices, we will just look to boost the squad with... Jorginho and Lissandro, uh, Lissandro, uh, yeah, Trossard. I thought, why I said Lissandro? I don't know why that went through my head, but Trossard deal, the Trossard deals. And look to bolster their squad with experience quality that comes at a reasonable price. And I understand the logic behind this. I understand that clubs don't want to be dragged over the coals. I understand that clubs don't want to pay above and beyond the prices that players are valued at. I stand by this. I think it's sensible. I think it's smart. And it's an important thing to do. You will burn through too much money. You know what? If you've got a brilliant squad and you're one player away from potentially winning it all and you've got to pay five million, ten million pound over, I think you can make an exception. But when you're looking, you can't let it become a precedent. You can't let it become what your club is synonymous for because you will hemorrhage money and at some stage you will come a cropper to it. But Arsenal, boost here on the Yulkarest deal. Gooners, do you think you're going to go in for him? And when it comes to Smith Rowe, how much are you willing to accept to sell him? Let us know in the comments section below. Now, we mentioned Stocks FC already. How you do this, you, you log in or you sign up. Obviously, I've already got an account, so I click on the login page. When you sign up now, you will receive five free stocks. Five free stocks. This gives you a little bit of a breakdown here when you first go onto, onto, the, onto the page. Now, I'm, I'm Good to sign in here. When you're signed in, you can look at many different things. You can look at the three current IPOs on offer in Harry Winks. Vestergaard is coming out on the 17th. And you've got uh, Hermanson, the goalkeeper, on the 18th. You can also see all the other players that are currently available on 
the current market and some really interesting things you can see that the highest current price or the lowest current price you could be looking for in here as well uh, the highest price you can see is Carl Walker you can look for the biggest change in the last 24 hours so who's had the biggest decreases who's increased the most you see Mason Mount there with a 67% increase Onana after his transfer to Aston Villa there a 25% increase What's really important to focus on is the rewards, okay, and how the rewards work. So you can look at, you know, team of the week as an example, and it will break down and show you who those players are. You can go into team of the season, and it will give you a breakdown of who the live top ranked players are um, and everything else that's going on. So it gives you a really good breakdown of, of, of how it all operates and how it all works now what's really important to look at as well i focus on the top performer tab because this is really key for your strategy and this is what's really important with stocks to see what's your strategy going to be you see chris wood here nobody would look at him and go i think he's a massive baller but his ipo price was seven was 45 cents okay with the amount of goals that he scored and the rewards that have paid out he has made a whopping 2462 percent return of investment for people that purchase these shares he earns $8.04 per, sh per share, per stock that's out there. And I showed you earlier when you go onto the all players list and you go to the cheapest options that are out there. You may start going through this list and think, you know what? I, I think that next season, I've got a feeling that uh, Adebayo is going to have, have an amazing season and start to score loads and loads and loads and loads of goals. And he may, he may not. It really does depend. But if you can get him at 28 cents and you think he's going to have a stellar season, he might start to pay out a lot of money for you. So there's some real bargains to be had in this as well. And my advice to everybody looking at Stocks FC is simply sign up to an account and start to do your research. Don't just jump in and invest money. Take a look at the strategy you want to use, the types of players you want to buy, who's what players have done well, which players have done poorly on it. Build a strategy before you start to invest. That is my opinion. But go and check it out now by scanning the QR code on the screen. Now, I want to move on to Chelsea here. It states, this here states that Chelsea are ready to make a push to sign Victor Osimhen. The Blues are highly have been highly linked with Osimhen and appear likely, he appear, appears likely to leave Napoli this summer. It has been suggested that the Italian club's asking price has been cut to 85 million. You are talking there a 50, 60, 70 million pound decrease based on a valuation of just 12 months ago. Court offside claim that Chelsea are planning to hold fresh talks with Napoli this week and are willing to offer Lukaku as part of the deal to bring him to Stamford Bridge. And I do feel like this is significant because swap deals have become a little bit faster. Even though on paper there wouldn't be a swap deal, there would be two or three separate deals. It works much better for FFP for all involved. They've become quite fashionable this summer. On top of that, Osimhen wants to leave. Napoli want Lukaku. It feels like a match made in heaven. And what we also know and has been revealed is that Chelsea have made a very good financial offer for, to Osimhen. I still think he's excellent. I know I, I have to hold it when it comes to my theory around footballers. Why are multiple other big clubs not willing to pay 80 plus million pounds for him? You have to hold that because it's a general theory that I have. That's me being objective. The subjective part of my brain, though, says that Chelsea are getting a star here if they can get it over the line. I don't think he's going to be Lionel Messi on the ball. I don't think he's going to be Luis Suarez. I don't think he's going to be Wayne Rooney as a striker. But what I do believe is that he can score 20 to 30 goals in all competitions a season for Chelsea. That alone could be the difference between top six and a Champions League position. Over the course of the next couple of seasons, that could be the difference from being in a title race to winning a major title. So I think this is a significantly potent piece of business for Chelsea if and when they're able to get it over the line. Now, moving on to Manchester United, a fee has been agreed with Lille between Manchester United and Lille for Lenny Euro, and the payments will be spread over several years. That comes from Laurie Whitwell. And what's really interesting with the Euro news is that in the past 24 hours, more and more of the British mainstream, the British tier ones, the big publications are talking about it. Ornstein states that he's the priority because he's harder to get done than the lip which typically you'd think about it being the other way. The reports from France today are that United are now leading the race, that his parents and his family are happy to come and live in Manchester. 
that the player is open to the move and is negotiating the personal terms. It's a far cry from three or four days ago where it was said he only wants Real Madrid, he's not interested in anything else. So the, the mood has already changed. I don't personally think it's changed. It's just it being reported on there's been a change. Real Madrid still in this race. Real Madrid can still get it done. Man United fans, don't delude yourself into thinking that it's a, it's a, it's a completed deal. Madrid have no chance. They are one of the best, one of the greatest teams in the world. They're, they're at the peak of their powers right now. And this man is hot, hot property indeed. But Man United stand a significant chance and have a significant opportunity to bring him in. Is he the finished article? No. But there is potential for days. There is amazing quality. There is good levels of athleticism and physicality as well, which should improve from the age of 18 as he reaches his early to mid-20s as well. So, look, I'm excited about the prospect of this transfer, especially year one in our rebuild. I really, really am. And if we are able to beat Real Madrid to his signature, I do believe that is a... It's a, it's, a, it's a nice little feather in the cap of the new regime as well. More to probably come out about this in the next 24 to 48 hours. I hope United can get it done. Let's not get complacent, though. The club's still working on other deals. But as ever, when it comes to all of these transfer stories this evening, I love your views. I love your opinions. Make sure you leave your comments below. Until next time, take care. Goodbye. God bless. And I'll see you soon. Peace.